Hello everyone, it's Barb here, longtime professional home care personal support worker, union steward, and certified member and co-chair of a joint health and safety committee. There is a saying out there, it's one of my favorite ones, you may have heard it, it states, those who do not learn from history are doomed to repeat it. Well, there's an addendum to that I learned a long time ago, and what it states is, those who have learned from history are doomed to watch those others who haven't learned, and I kind of fall into that category. Everyone's going on about, oh, we need to open this up. We need to start moving again. We need to get the economy fired up again. We need to open the borders. We need to do this. We need to do that. So when this isn't even over yet, they may be slowing in some, in some areas, but the numbers are still climbing. So this brings me to the Spanish flu. I'll let you do the research on that one. It was Spanish flu. It ran from 1918 to 1920. There are, were four waves. I didn't know about the fourth wave actually till some years ago when I did a little research. It was a minor wave, but it was still there. The first wave wasn't too bad. The second wave was much worse because uh, they say troop movements during the First World War. And the third wave was bad and the fourth wave was kind of minor. In all the things I've read about that, uh, a main thing was that people loosened restrictions too soon or, or they didn't have as severe restrictions as they should have. And that killed a lot of people. Estimates range anywhere from 50 million to 100 million dead. And that was at a time when the world population was 1.8 billion. And they figure at least 500 million were infected. That's almost a third of the population at the time. And then 50 to 100 million actually died. It's been so long ago, they can't get more accurate numbers. It's their best guess, essentially, with the research that they have done. And that is why I am not very keen on everyone loosening things and getting things moving again. In one of my previous videos, I uh, mentioned a Zen saying, before enlightenment, chop wood and carry water. After enlightenment, chop wood and carry water. What that means is the work that you do to attain a thing, once you've attained that thing, you don't stop doing that work because you want to keep the thing you've attained, you see. The same thing applies here. All of the precautions we're doing now, the, the, which we should have been doing even before this, you know, the washing hands, not going out when you're sick, not being around with sick people, not touching your face, et cetera, et cetera. We need to keep doing that. And we need to be more vigilant and careful when this is over because this w may resurge if we're not careful. And besides that, this sort of thing is going to keep happening every time a new organism comes up. One year from now, five years from now, 10 years from now, it will happen again and it will keep happening. So I've said before, we need to nail down how we handle this so that we're not running around like chickens with our heads cut off again when it happens the next time we could just say oh here comes a new one let's let's just implement all this stuff right now i've heard that in um the long-term care facilities um where, who have been hard hit there were some who were successful and there were some who didn't have any cases at all and what i have read was that they as soon as they caught wind of this they put practices into place and it harkens back to back on march 2nd when i started sounding the alarm at my place of employment, I said, hey, listen, this thing's two hours away. We need to start looking at doing something. And oh, no, everything's fine. Well, nine days later on March 11th, pandemic, learn from this, please, because it's important. The next one may be worse. Don't relax your guard too much. Always be vigilant. Thank you so much. Uh, stay healthy, stay safe, and I'll see you on the flip side.